So yes, hello, good evening. I'm going to be talking about dreams and uh, lucid dreaming and astral projection and uh, some other things, prophetic dreaming, writing your dreams down, keeping a journal, things like that. So, hello everyone, my name is Alan, welcome to my channel. It's uh, your first time, I hope you stick around and subscribe, or at least make a comment below. I'm going to talk a little about lucid dreaming and astral projection tonight. I'm getting back into my um, dream work. I've started a, a dream journal, and I also have an app on my phone, a real basic voice recorder, so I can, at night when I wake up from a dream, you know, just do it the voice and I don't have to fully wake up. I like to do that. And I found just in the past week of recording, I, I've been remembering dreams more. I haven't been able to get lucid yet, but um, I have sleep apnea. I've had it um, basically all my life. You know, everyone telling me I snore all the time and, you know, um, partners, uh, friends, yeah, living in dormitory situations, roommates. And um, and I've tried the CPAP machine. I can't get used to it. So, therefore, I'm being wakened all the time. That's why I remember my dreams so well. Now, also, I'm doing research on uh, marijuana use and how it um, messes with your REMs and you don't remember your dreams. And that's unfortunate. And if that's the case, I'm going to stop. And I don't know if it's because I cut down a lot or if I'm writing them down and more I'm doing LBRPs in the morning doing um, middle pillar exercises and I used to do uh, a lot of those type of meditations on a daily basis I'm offered the um, I don't work full time I have a daily schedule and a weekly schedule and things I have to be at but I'm kind of flexible as far as I don't need a full, I've never slept eight hours. I sleep probably three to four at a stretch with naps throughout the day like that. So it's real conducive to dreaming and lucid dreaming. Now it's important to write down your dreams because you'll have if you're like me and once you're getting into the flow in that you'll start having prophetic dreams. And if you don't write them down, it's just going to be like deja vu. But if you write it down, you can go back and prove it, actually. Now, I don't know how much proof it's going to be to your friends and that, but my friends know me now. I journal, I'm a lifelong journaler for different things, and even like a diary type journal. So if I say something happens, they know it did. Because it, they know how I do my journals. And, well, not everyone, of course, but my friends do. And I did a, a video on uh, journaling uh, here. I do need notebooks. They're pretty flexible but sturdy. I like to do one side of a page with the other side blank. And then when I, I reach the end, I just flip it over and complete the other side. I try to keep them themed oriented. This is my tarot journal. Over there is my, or here's my tarot journal. That's dream journal. I have a, a diary journal and a um, other journal over there. So, so lucid dreaming and astral projection. I I studied, if you're like me, you've read a lot of books on this, like Freud, uh, Carl Jung, There's a lot of dream books in that, different psychologists and methods and like mythology, Joseph Campbell, not just the Greek and Roman mythology, because that's the same. The Romans said, well, this is a fine system, let's use it. They did. They just renamed everything. You know, Poseidon is Neptune. Um, 
Zeus is uh, Jupiter. Um, Mars is Apollo. Like that. Um, but like learn uh, Norse, Celtic mythology, African, Haiti, you know, whatever you, you can. Um, Carlos Castaneda, his books are very great. And uh, so now I'm, I'm trying to read updated material. I haven't really read anything in a long time, decades, any uh, new stuff. And I'm finding it really interesting with, like, the new apps I mentioned and everything on YouTube. But there are some really good uh, astral projection books out there. I remember reading one. I forget the name of it. But it went into, like, these uh, negative entities. And I always thought I was crazy. That's what would wake me up from astral projection, seeing, like, the white golden light of, like, Tathira thinking it's God, you know, it's very frightening to see these entities that will mess with you. I think you're kind of going crazy. Your friends certainly do when you say you're talking to a community. I remember one time, I'm searching for my holy guardian angel. I think I had found her several times. Um, and one time she took a cell phone and uh, didn't throw it at me, but just kind of went like that, and glided over and glided into my heart, and melted in there. Now, that really frightened me. If I had things under control, I might have accepted that as a way of communicating, and I might have gleaned some sort of information from that. I have um, this library I go to on the astral plane, and I'm uh, looking for uh, a number. Uh, different things like that reoccurring things that you want to go back to. Different floors, I call them. It's a uh, real experience. I don't know where it's going to lead me. It's just really interesting and fun to control your, your dreams. I can um, give you some examples of... It used to be a big thing to um, try to pick out the puns in your dreams. To, to enhance interpretation so that, like I had a dream one time that my girlfriend's family was all having Christmas dinner and I um, I was invited, but I got, I got in an argument. I said, I'm not going. So I ran over there anyway and I was looking through the window in my dream. And I mean, that's pretty obvious. I was on the outside looking in, feeling like that. That's just a dream. It wasn't uh, lucid or anything. One time I had a prophetic dream where a girl, I lived in a four complex duplex and a girl lived at the bottom floor. I lived up on top. But she was really cool. She went to AA in that. She had a small kid. And she got a DUI. This is back in the 80s. Um, they weren't real strict about as they are now. But, um, it's a good thing they are now, believe me. And um, so anyway, I had a dream that her uh, kid had scribbled on the wall and that she and I were uh, erasing it and, uh, you know, wiping it off. Now, a few days later, one of her boyfriends or guys she's getting rides to meetings with showed up drunk, pounding on her door, waking everybody up. Then he went away, came back, and I heard a, a glass break. He broke her front window. And everybody like woke up and came down and chased him off. And he came back again. And we got him and uh, called the police. But through, I wrote that dream down. And it happened later. And I'm the one who fixed the window, by the way. I was glad to. And, but do you see how it was prophetic? That's one example of uh, just many. I've located people's things, like a remote viewing type thing, and able to uh, go places, visit friends. Um, just, it's uh, it's real. Then uh, Kabbalah pathworking. That's real too. That's real fun. You can go and 
I've never made it further than to Thera. It's a six. The yellow one. And I do other things. I visit my astral temple. I do that uh, visually, too. I do something called bubble work, which is like the middle pillar, but in addition to it, it's just once you do the middle pillar exercise, or like a chakra type uh, exercise, I encase myself in a bubble and fill it with green liquid that needs oxygen to breathe it. This is all, is it real or is it in your head? Well, let me tell you. It's all in your head. This too. So, I think I've rambled on enough. Ten minutes. It's more than enough. And, uh, if you got something out of it, if not, leave me a comment. I'll try to, um, give you something that you like better. Ciao.